look, it's the fourth game of the season, so I'm genuinely saying this. People mocking Arsenal and, but, well, not so much Norwich about being a relegation six-pointer. Um, you know, give us a rest. Um, but, but it is an important game for Arsenal because I think there's a danger that the faith they may have had as a club and as a group of supporters in their manager, Mikel Arteta, may be fading. And we asked for your calls. We're going to get those on after nine because there are Arsenal fans who do want to talk about this. But all over Twitter um, in the last few days, uh, there have been Arsenal fans, but this usual, you know the trope I'm about to roll out, who are saying that despite my grandfather supporting the club and my dad and now me, um, I want Arsenal to lose to Norwich because it will bring the festering boil of what of the process, I think is what Mikel calls it, uh, to some kind of uh, point. I have to say, very incidentally, those of you, uh, and Joby, I'm, I'm telling you because you don't know me as well, um, her indoors um, is a mad Arsenal fan, it was a season ticket holder until we left London, and if she hears me slagging them off, I will get broccoli and fish for my tea, so I've got to speak <laughs> quietly, okay, for the next That's little while. That's if you while. get any tea at all. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm hoping for something delicious, but it could well be broccoli when she's not happy with me. Um, listen, uh, Darren... <laughs> It's no, but look, we, they, we live in a 24-hour, seven days a week media. There's no point in pretending there isn't pressure on Mikel Arteta because there just is. Arsenal, I think, outspent most teams in the Premier League, perhaps except for Manchester United, um, in terms of wages and transfer fees in the summer. They've got off to a calamitous start, albeit two of the games were against difficult teams and they've had injuries. But this game is monstrous for them, isn't it? Yeah, it is monstrous, precisely because there were so many teams like Norwich, um, Obviously, Norwich were in the championship last season, but there were so many teams that Arsenal should have been beating that were beating Arsenal last season. So there's no guarantee whatsoever that this is an opportunity for them to get their season back on track and that, that they will take. And I, I think the pressure for Mikel Arteta, given not just the defeats, but the manner of the defeats, uh, the, the lack of fight against Brentford, the chaos against Chelsea, the, the lack of pressure on the ball in the game against Manchester City, uh, Xhaka getting sent off and being patted on the back as he's leaving the field by Arteta. There are nuts. so many absolutely things. Absolutely nuts. Absolutely. And uh, by, obviously by comparison, and I don't say this to, to, to be provocative at all, but I think as is always the way of football, Arsenal, some Arsenal fans will look at Spurs at top of the league having all their problems this season and getting a great start to the Premier League season. And they will say, we have spent all this money. Where has it gone? And that's why there is so much pressure on that team. I'll come back to the, the hierarchy that people are moaning about, I particularly see on social media. That is Mikel Arteta and Adu, of course. I mean, Arsenal have got seven or eight different people at that level, haven't they? But Adu appears to be the one they're targeting. Joby, what I want to ask you is how a team who are expected to do well, or at least do better than they've been doing, who make this calamitous start to the season that I described, um, how do they get themselves back together again? Do they look to the manager or do they get themselves together in little bunches and say, what, what is going on here? We must do better than this. Or if you've got your captain being sent off in the middle of a game where you're already up against the wall, is everyone just going, well, if he can't be bothered, nor can I? I've got to be honest, I don't know, because I look at Arsenal, not just now, but for a number of years, and like you, I'm from North London, I say like you, your, your wife's an Arsenal yeah. fan, but a lot of yeah. my friends and, and people that I've grown up with are Arsenal fans, and it's not Likewise. just, yeah, it's not just this season, or like this has been going on, so who are those leaders, who are, if they are a group of players in that, that squad, getting together, saying, listen, we need to be doing better than we are yes you do look to your manager at times but again he's very very inexperienced as a manager so maybe he doesn't quite have all those answers at the moment but again for me I think the big problem with it we look at Arsenal and we think of Arsenal as this top Premier League team certainly in the Premier League era the team that has always qualified for Champions League. they're not that team anymore Danny they're just not so you look at the start they've had Man City okay Chelsea, they're not anywhere near those two teams. Yes, the manner of the defeats were poor. Brentford's the one. And again, that then comes back to Arteta. They should be doing better, certainly against those kind of teams. And for me, he's got a massive, massive month coming up. Norwich, right. Burnley, I expect it, him to get results in. Yeah, here's, here's the eye test for you. Um, you look at a football team and the first thing I ask, I mean, first of all, the manager has two things in my opinion. One, 
Um, he has to get them up for it, right? And professional players shouldn't need that, but we know that they do. Groups of people need to be encouraged. So does that. But secondly, I, I then look at what is the manager? What is the plan here to win this football match? Some teams will kill you with possession. Manchester City will want to boil you alive with possession. Liverpool will kill you with rapier thrusts with their front three and deny you attacks on their own penalty area with their strong running midfielders. Um, teams are defensive. Other teams like Wolves are defensive but want to spring out and play on the break. All those teams have an identity, and which I mean because that's modern nonsense, identity. I can identify how they are trying to win the football match. How are Arsenal trying to win their current football matches? Anyone answer me? Well, I think they're trying to play it with a style of football that's easy on the eye. And I think in Ben White, for example, he is a wonderful player, but he's wonderful at bringing the ball out from defence and he's very graceful on the ball. He's very intelligent with his distribution. But I needed him really heading balls out in that game against Brentford when the going got tough. I needed him grabbing players, metaphorically speaking, by the scruff mm -hmm. of the neck and pointing around and, and, and showing some leadership in that match. And I want to see a, a number of players in the Arsenal team doing that because the way they're going to win football matches at the moment is rolling up their sleeves and getting down and dirty, not by playing great football. That's not really the priority at the moment, but they can't do either. No, but again, you're asking a Ben White who's a young fantastic footballer who will go on to be a really really good one to come in and be that leader I agree and for me that shouldn't be part of his responsibility at this stage of his career you know and again it comes back to the points of not having those characters around them you've got your captain getting sent off or say your captain one of your senior players getting sent off again you know who has been your captain in the past in Xhaka that's not setting a, a, an example that the other players can follow I just don't see enough of them. And look at the signings they've made. They're all Sorry, young you, players. Remember, you know you said that, but getting patted on the back. I mean, you've been on the touchline. Ridiculous. I would so, have been absolutely fuming oh. with any of my players, let alone one of my leaders, who clearly he is in that group, in the manner that he got sent off. I mean, I would have... It would have been very difficult for me to even look at him walking past me, let alone give him a pat on I mean, the back. But so, Joe so, B, sorry to it, ask it, this, yeah, go but on, I just on, think just the psychology of that pat on the back, what did, what did it tell us in your opinion? Well, again, it was interesting because looking from what I saw, I, I think at first sight, Mikel Arteta was thinking it wasn't as bad as it was or he didn't maybe make contact enough. But it's a reckless challenge. He's out of control. We've seen him do it before. Um, and again, I think he's trying to keep everybody on side. That's the thing I would take from it. He's trying to, he can't alienate anyone because he needs every one of those players at the moment to be with him and try and get that team going. And clearly when you are one of the experienced players, there is a lot of responsibility on, responsibility on your shoulders. But I think that again comes back to, you look at that, <sighs> Callum Chambers, Rob Holding, Kolasinac, Cedric, you know, they're not starters. You know, he, he is at the moment playing with players who probably wouldn't be his first choice and even some of the signings in the summer. So listen, I think we have to give him at least this month to see hopefully getting a few of those players back that are going to be important, but they need to start winning some games very, very quickly. Yeah, the last game of the month, of course, is the North London derby. And we all know what human beings are like. If they get a couple of points, they beat Norwich, say, or a team, let's be fair, who will let Arsenal play. Um, and then they get a couple of points here and there, win the North London derby and everybody, it'll all be open top parades down East London High Street, won't it? And drink, drinks, drinks all round in Upper Street. It'll be, it'll be that. We, um, but at the moment, that is not where they are well, at. Dan, We're going to get next. Yeah, go on. Very, very quickly. I mean, listen, you, you're, you're a Spurs fan. You remember when mm. Wander Ramos had two points from his opening eight games. It was replaced by, by Harry, uh, Harry yeah. Redknapp. So if they draw against Norwich and they draw Arsenal draw against Burnley that's two points from their mm -hmm. opening six games five games mm -hmm. and then they beat Spurs are they in better shape and does he stay um, for you the psychologically if they if they do beat Spurs that's why it's going to be a massive game if they do beat Spurs I think I think there'll be enough breathing space um for the authorities there to say um, let's crack on with this but I do my 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 issue but and I'm trying to be neutral here is that um, I haven't seen any change in Arsenal's team since mm. Mikel took over. I don't still see exactly what they're trying to do to win the football matches and the flaws that he inherited, despite 18 months, now 20 months, is it, of the process are still there. Um, uh, but 
you, you eventually you start to say Unai Emery. You start to list, list out the names. Um, maybe is there something else going on at that club with recruitment or something else that's not quite letting them um, have the players they need to do what they want. Would anyone do any better with that group of players? I don't know. I haven't a clue, to be honest. And I, I think sometimes on these programmes, it's worth saying we don't always know the answer. I don't have an mm. answer to that. Um, but all I know is the Arsenal fans um, and the people who, who decide whether you're having a steak sandwich or fish and broccoli will be in a better <laughs> mood if they can win that North London derby. 